behalf of the Jewish nation, the Jewish people, we'd like to publicly acknowledge Rosalind and Clive Robinson, the entire family, for affording us the privilege and honor of honoring Yosef. According to our hallowed traditions, based on our Messiah, Abraham was the first Jew who traditionally buried his wife, the matriarch Sarah. And when Yosef would receive an aliyah to the Torah, when Yosef would be called to represent the Jewish nation before God, reading from the hallowed sacred Torah text, he'd be called up as Yosef ben Avram because he had a direct connection to the patriarch Abraham. And we thank the family publicly for allowing us the privilege to honor our brother Yosef. But there's an addendum, an appendage that has to be added to his name. He's no longer just Yosef, he's Yosef HaTzadik. He's the righteous Joseph. He's our brother who has shown, as was mentioned earlier, through a commitment in his life and in his death to appreciating what it means to be Jewish. We read recently in the Torah portion of the Egla Rufa. When a corpse is found and the murder is unknown and the nearest community takes culpability or responsibility. And that's our community. It happened two blocks from our shul, our synagogue, the night of my son's engagement. As he was celebrating, Yosef was dying. Yosef touched so many lives. So we must take communal responsibility. And the hallowed words of the Torah, We didn't murder him. And we certainly didn't allow him to leave this world unaccompanied. Because the great sages, the elders of that time, would declare, Lo'irayinu, we didn't see him, as the Gemara says, and ignore him. So many people in this room and beyond opened up their homes to Yosef. So many people today and yesterday and the day before in Barabak and Flatbush told me how he was part and parcel of their lives. So many pictures are posted on the internet of Yosef with children of members of our community, instructing them, teaching them, loving them, and they loved him in return. So we have to take responsibility. Leave Vui, according to the Gemara, is Dalad Amis. The Gemara says, Kol she'enay melave u meslave ki ilu the sages of the Talmud teach us that any human being who doesn't accompany others or allow himself to be accompanied is a murderer. And the Gemara in Saita says, Levo is Dalad Amis. This story in the Torah of a corpse that's found with an unknown murderer can sometimes take place 5, 10, 12 miles from that city. The man did not die for lack of food. So the question is raised, if we are obligated to accompany a fellow Jew, <coughs> and to do so means to walk him exactly six feet out the door, then what would have happened had we not accompanied him? The murder took place seven miles away, and he didn't die for lack of food, but the elders say that of course we'd have fed him. The Maral in Agodais Mesef the Saita says an incredible incident. When the Jewish nation accompanies any and every Jew, then the Pamalya Shalmalo, the heavenly tribunal, the celestial angels, all empty out of heaven. And they accompany him. And he's protected by angels. And the Maral goes on to say that Kuchavrihu de Rabbeinu Shalom, God Almighty Himself leaves his heavenly throne and accompanies that person. That's what Levi is all about. And that's what's happening tonight. Because we are accompanying Yosef. 
the covenant offering, the last honor that we can afford him. We're doing it with dignity and mass. And if we're doing it, then the angels are going to accompany him. Then God Almighty will accompany him and welcome him into the heavenly environs. The Pundit Yisrael spoke prior to World War II at the World Conference of Agudas Yisrael. Europe was burning beneath their feet the horrors of the Holocaust and the genocide that would unfold were before their eyes. And the sages of that generation had spent days debating what can be done to save the Jewish people. The point of Israel got up and he said as follows. He said there was an individual whose home caught on fire. The man was sleeping in his bed. The neighbors came and they tried to save him. But they saw that the bed wouldn't fit through the doorpost. So they sent for pickaxes and saws and hammers and crowbars. And they started hacking away, widening the opening to be able to take the bed out. And the fellow woke by and he said, fools, just wake him up. Wake up the, the fellow and he'll walk out in his own accord. And the Pana Bishirub said, Yiddish folk, that's the Chufit, Jewish nation, wake up! Wake up and you'll walk out the door. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a clarion call to our community. Something is wrong. We're doing something wrong. You can't just blame it. And his brother in law spoke like a prophet of yore. It's the hand of God, it's the Lebanon Shalom. But there are reasons that things occur. And we appreciate the police department and the politicians and the court judicial system. But at the end of the day, we make it or break it. At the end of the day, there's a lesson that has to be learned. And we as a community have to figure out how to wake up, how to arouse ourselves from our slumber, how to be more concerned with each other, how to see that this sorry is not just the actus of a moment, but the actus of eternity. Because that's what Yes's message was all about. As the Rav of Agudas Yisrael, I would watch him down and I would watch him pray. I observed a handsome, proud young Jew who fit right into the crown. Sounds a bit strange, but that was the reality. He davened like a Yid, he lived like a Yid, but he was killed like a Yid. It's our job to do whatever we possibly can do to amend what's wrong, to respect each other, to respect humanity, but certainly to bring up the Jewish nation closer together. There's a concept called Kilo Shem Shemayim Barab. The reason why Kaddish is recited is because there's something lacking in the world that has to be filled with Kibbush Hashem. Yisgadel v'yisgadei shmei rabo is increasing the sanctity and the sanctification of God's name publicly. There's a void in our hearts. There's a void in our people. All of Israel mourns this terrible tragedy. But we can't remain in a state of mourning. That wasn't Yosef's life. That wasn't his lifestyle. Can't exactly get into the hip-hop mode, but I can tell you that he's a person who celebrated life. And he was attracted to Yiddishkeit and Judaism not because there's a heavy mug and David that we wear on our backs, but because of the beauty of Yiddishkeit, the celebration of Judaism, the fun, the love that we have for each other. Let's continue that. Let's strengthen ourselves. As was mentioned earlier, in Midais Tegais, in good character traits, refining our character becoming more loving, more compassionate, more caring, more generous, will be a tremendous bliss of the nifl. In our shape through the Tzorah Chaim, Moch Hashem Alekim Dimam Yal Kopanim, we witness and see God's hand avenging His death, seeing that justice is served. We desire to strengthen ourselves. Once again, we thank the family. We all desire to see the Lord's Amen. Amen.